All right, Outlaw Radio Live fans, we are live with none other than the legendary Mo Prem Shakur. How are you doing tonight? I'm hanging tough, bro. Hanging t- tough. How y'all doing out there? Uh, we are most definitely doing good. Um, long anticipated wait for this interview. Um, I know a lot of people are tuning in tonight. Um, so, and I know you're a busy guy, so I'm going to get right into this. Um, what made you decide to get into the music industry? What made me decide to get into the music industry? Um, <laughs> music. I was, uh, you know, I'm telling on myself, but I'm old enough to uh, to remember pre-hip-hop. Pre-hip-hop was funk and soul. So, funk, soul, disco, house, club, you know, I'm, I grew up in New York, so, uh, you know, I was all into the music. I needed a way to escape, and uh, that was it, baby. And uh, once it uh, so evolved into hip-hop, that was all me. I used to break dance. I, I couldn't really break. I was a popper. I used to pop up top. I kill you. Uh, <laughs> and I used to rap. I was too poor for equipment. Couldn't afford no equipment, but I had to be a part of it. The whole thing, hip, the hip hop. You know, I'm from the hip hop era. You know, uh, originally. So you know, growing up in Queens, South Jamaica, Queens. Shout out to Queens. Uh, block parties. Uh, you know, all over New York, Harlem, World Land Quarters, uh, Paradise, <laughs> Zanzibar. Oh, here's no with that. Most definitely, honestly, um, I'm think break dancing. I couldn't do that for the life of me. <laughs> um, so you speaking of old school uh, hip hop? Um, you first record your first recorded experience was on Tony Tony Tones' 1990 hit single "Feels Good." What's the story behind that single, and how did you get hooked up with Tony? Uh, I'm, I'm, well, you know, I. Um... I just got into the Bay. I was a young dude, early 20s, fresh out the military, on swole, had some bread in my pocket, uh, was still my, uh, still my music jeans, hip hop jeans was in me. So, uh, at the very least, I was going to make a demo, you know, and I actually could afford to make my own demo. So, uh, I took some of my money. I got a producer, uh, Kenya Groove, Eric Baker, he is uh, uh, related to one of the members of Tony, Tony, Tony. They came through the studio while I was doing my demo. And uh, uh, my man Raphael from the group, shout out to Ray, you know, he asked, did I want to be on this record? Now, I knew that they were already established. They were already out there. They had uh, Little Walter. <laughs> song called Little Walter back in the days. You know, they was professional. I was still trying to get on. So that was my shot. That was my shot. So I had to take it. Regardless what kind of group, what kind of whatever, I wanted to be in the business. You know, so I um, I put something together and, and, you know, God was good. I was number one out the door, number one with a bullet. And also, you've had a few different names in, in hip hop. Uh, you had Mosidius, Wicked, and Konami. Uh, what are the stories behind hey, 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 those hold on, names? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me get you the right pronunciation. It's Mosidius. You know what I'm saying? Mosidius, the mellow, quite a nice fellow. Met 3T, hit a rhyme, my capello. They had the rhythm and I had the rhyme. So they hit it that one more time. You worked it out and they worked it in. Totally, 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 and said it again. Now that was. Older than Thug Life. <laughs> well, that was feels good. Mercedes. I went as Mercedes. I went as Wicked. Yeah. Uh, Mo Prime, Comani Outlaw. You know, all of the above. You know, as an artist, you change, you evolve. You know, you go through uh, different metamorphoses during the artistic journey. So, what made you originally decide to use like your name, Mo Prime Shakur? I got Mo Prem in the early Thug Life days, you know, Pac and uh, the rest of the fellas, you know, they, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wicked, I could be wicked, but, you know, I try to keep it cool, and uh, 
I'm from Queens and an infamous uh, click from Queens, uh, the Supreme King, legendary uh, 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 crew out of Queens, my town, so old Queens. That's pretty catchy. I like that, actually. Yeah, Supreme yeah I try to keep it. Hell yeah. I keep it. I try to keep it grown and sexy, you know what I mean? So. But uh, that, it felt good. It felt good. And uh, Pac, was, you know, put it on me. So I, I ran with that. I held on to that one. So. Uh, Added so on with the Khomeini, but, uh, you know, more cream stuff. I'll, I've I've always I've always known you as Mo Prem, so I, it just kind of sticks with me too, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So in 1993, you and your brother Tupac formed the group Thug Life with, alongside Big Psych, Macadocious, and Rated R. What's the story uh, behind that, and how did that iconic rap group come to be? Oh, uh, uh, get, get chills. Mo Prem is called Thug Life Outlaw Immortal Alpha Thug. Alpha Thug. I'm one of the Alpha Thugs. You know what I mean? Me, Pac, early crew, Alpha Thug. So, uh, you know, we the architects of this shit. And, um, you know, when Pac was putting it together, we helped him, you know, build what is now known as Thug Life. It didn't, um, people missed a lot. People got a lot of the messages, but they missed a lot of the messages. It did, you know, it was, uh, it was and still is a powerful movement around the world. Um, it's underground, low key. It still exists. It is not as um, <laughs> together as we would like, you know. But you know, my people out there, my people out there, you know, you know, it's the fam. We know who he is, you know. But um, we started putting that together. Actually, Pac started working on it earlier. Because at the time, we was beefing. You know, we brothers. You know, I ain't always get along. I want no yes man. You dig? You know, uh, I love him, but I want no yes man. So at times, we would beef. And then he put together a record for Interscope. It was too hard. That, the original Thug Life album was too hard. And then um, and something happened that brought his link is back up. He's like, yo, Mo, I need you to help me put together a deliverable album for Interscope. Cause they're not trying to put it out. So, okay, you know, I started working on that. Pac went to New York, worked on Above the Rim because we were in multiple parts of the industry. You know, we had we were trying to cover all the work. You know, because we went from zero to 100 real quick from being, you know, broke, from being so poor speak. ass niggas in the hood, excuse the expression. Oh no, it's all good. So, you can swear as much as like on Um, you know, we had the you know, access to the music industry, access to the film, access to television. Just trying to get as much of it in as we could, make an impact, you know, Pac was coming up, he was trying to and make an impact, you know, we had good people behind them, a digital underground, you know, uh me, uh Ray Loves from from Strictly Dope from his first rap group. You know, you had people who had a lot of love back then, so we were supporting them, helping them get to, you know, them places he needed to get to show them who the fuck he was. You dig? Most definitely. And, um, and then the family grew, the crew grew, grew, grew. You know, we took some L's. You know, there was, uh, you know, there was some few bad decisions made along the way. Some our fault, some not. But, you know, we made as much impact as we could. Shout out to Macadocious, Rated R, Lockdown, Hold Your Head, Big Psych, Machiavelli, Much Respect Always. You know what I mean? Thug Life Crew. Shout out to Yaku Gaddafi as well. Fatal. Young Fatal. So, you know, it's a long, long, um, tragic story. It's also fantastic. Yeah, I, I had the privilege of interviewing Radar as well, and he's a very, very good guy, you know. Um, you know, I hopefully one day, hopefully soon, he gets freed up. Yeah, yeah, I'm from the Keep It Real generation. We're from the Keep It Real generation. You know, we try to keep it true and keep it real with the people as much as we could. You know, when you look at the fellas and, uh, you know, uh, the, the post effect, 
you know, uh, you will see, you know. So our Pac is the king of rap. We legends. It's also why a lot of us ain't here no more. But um, we, we still represent, you know. And the words of my man Fade, we strong people. You know what I mean? So when you said like how you helped Pac make a deliverable album for Interscope, that actually ties into my next question. Um, I don't know if a lot of the listeners would know this, but in 1994, Thug Life Volume 1, you rapped on the record and also helped produce it. What was the energy like in the studio, and how does it feel knowing you were on both sides of this iconic record? Well, uh, didn't know it was going to be iconic at the time. Um, we were very inspired by the movement, by the concept, because it was more than just a record. It was a, a set of rules and regulations for people in the hood, our people, the thugs, and the people in the street to, to adhere to so we could survive in the time of, uh, um, you know, the Clinton criminal reforms and shit. So um, that's what we were on. But uh, uh, what was the original question? I'm sorry, I'm ranting. Oh, no, it's all good. Uh, so what I asked was, um, what was the energy like in the studio, and how does it feel knowing you oh. were on both sides of the record? Oh, oh well, it, it felt good, you know, being, um, making big moves. You know, Pac was making a film, and we was recording the album <laughs> on a major label. So we was feeling good about ourselves, but, you know, it was still a lot of anxiety to be successful at it, you know what I mean? Um, and the, 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 I think that excitement and the hope and the uh, that energy, you know, outweighed a lot of other shit, you know? Um, the fact that where we recorded at, it's called Blue Palm Studio out here in um, North Hollywood. It was owned by a, a, a legend, uh, Mr. Mr. Norman Whitfield, R.I.P. Mr. Norman Whitfield, is holler at his sons. But um, Norman Whitfield was was part of Motown. Norman Whitfield what, wrote half of the biggest Motown hits. Norman Whitfield uh, produced Car Wash. Norman Whitfield had Whitfield Records. That's his studio is where we recorded Thug Life at. All that to say. So um, it was cool. We, we he shared a lot, he shared a lot of gay with me, he told me a lot of the stories, and, you know, because they did a lot of the same shit we was doing, you know. I guess he was, um, you know, started reminiscing because we was about the same age as the niggas was at Motown, and, you know, we had some major going on, we was trying to do it. So, you know, he was like, you know, you do it right, keep them recording, keep them writing them songs, keep writing them songs, you know. <clears throat> Like, this ain't my thing, it's y'all thing, but it's, you know, more songs, the better, keep it going, get, you know, he was giving me some good game. So, um, having an old head around who knew the business, having our, 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 our new thug family coming through, uh, uh, Big Psych, Big Psych brought in Johnny J, um, you know, Ray coming in and ripping in him and, him and his crew and Macado coming from his side of town, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it was, it was heavy, yeah, it was heavy, you know, you know, Live Squad was there, and, um, it was, you know, the energy was good. And I have to say, that's actually one of my favorite Tupac records, um, it's just, it's one of those CDs that I find it is still relevant today to, to today's society. It's so, it's pure, raw, unpolished, it's just sincere, it's a lot of, it's sincere, you know? Most definitely, I think um, the song "How How Long Do How Long Do You Mourn Me" uh, that song actually helped me get through a lot of personal situations. Huh. So that one most definitely is one of my favorite tracks. Is off that album alone. How long will they mourn me? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That one helped me get through yeah, my best friend's death. Thing, so. That was another thing about about my brother about Pac. You know, he uh, talked about death a lot. He, he, he foresaw death, you know, a lot, of, you know, amongst the crew, we noticed that he was being real, real prophetic. He would talk about some shit, be talking about some shit randomly, and then it happened. Talking about some shit, and then it happened. And it's like, you know, 
I, I mean, me as his brother, you know, did not feel very comfortable with him talking about all this death shit. You know, I, you know, the nigga, the name of the group was group is Thug Life, <laughs> but um, you know, the, the the you know, I guess you got to talk about both, and um, yeah, it's just it's some ill shit. But um, yeah, we was dealing with some spooky spiritual. Uh, <laughs> Galactic shit in our in our situation. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm still here. You know, but uh, it tell a story. Pop told everybody only few was a little tell. You talking to a few of them? Maybe that's why you're here to finish off his story. You know. Dig that. So, what is your favorite track off the Thug Life Volume One record, and why? That's true. Depends on the mood. You know what I mean? If, uh, if I'm going deep, deep in some deep, you know, reminiscing thug life shit, uh, I'll throw on straight balling. <laughs> straight balling. <laughs> straight balling. It's pure pop, pure unadulterated pop, you know, in the thug era. You know? Most, uh, I actually like that one. I, I also like Cradle to the Grave as well. That's another, another classic hit on that track on that album. Yeah, that that'd probably be up there the second. You know, I do have to say, and don't get it twisted. You murdered your verse, man. You murdered that verse. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. I mean, yeah, I, I was I, I was feeling that for the time. For the time, it was, it was I thought it was pretty hot. You know, I, 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 you know, we were trying to. <sighs> Thug Life was about black and brown, and all shades of all the poor, and disenfranchised people in all the hoods and all the ghettos, trying to survive, who's ostracized, left out, forgotten about. That's what Thug Life was about. You know. Uh, um, so it encompassed a lot of people. And at the time, we were dealing with here, United States. All the, the gangs, the crews, the blues, the reds, GDs, vice lords, north, south, kings, uh, you know, uh, the list goes on and on. No disrespect to anyone. But, you know, that, 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 that's our strength. You know, that's the one thing we have in common. So we were trying to bring the thugs nationwide then worldwide together to 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 look out for us because people those that have are not looking out for those without let me say that again those that have are not looking out for those without i live in california i live on the west side most of the time and all up and down this coast from the, even out of california ontario homeless people all up and down the freaking coast yo all up and down. And it ain't, it ain't even just California. So, there's something, you know, is going on and wasn't being addressed. And that was 25 years ago. Look at it now. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's so much worse now than then. But, you know. When you were speaking when you were speaking about homelessness, um, that had to pop in my head one of your brother's sayings, actually. like, And I find it, it still actually should be done. Um, when he's when he said I, I heard it in the uh, Tupac Resurrection movie, when he said um, every, every day homeless people should be living in the White House and the White House should be living like the poor, you know, like every every month is just switch. That way, rich people can live like the poor and poor people can live like the rich, so they can both see both sides of the story. Uh -huh. That's that that yeah. right there is the most powerful shit I've ever heard. When I first saw that movie, I was like, damn. You know, our, our, our movement was really trying to be about the community, you know, our way of, of you know, trying to uplift, strengthen, and, 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 you know, improve our community by improving and saving ourselves, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I'm, you know, my, all my 
brother's grinding. All my brothers out there on the block. All my brother, all my Latin brothers, all my freaking, you know, my my, my my ones getting down and dirty out there for survival with them big ass families trying to feed. <laughs> you know. So I have to ask, what is your one? What is one of your most fondest memories you've shared with the Thug Life days? I know there's probably a lot. So if you if you can't pick one, just maybe tell us like a quick little story about it. Uh, uh, um, wow, <laughs> it's quite a quite a few, my friend. Um, oh shit, probably, man, Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta freak me. Atlanta freak me. We, we, that was kind of the apex. I think I was, uh, went to 93 or the 94 one. Went to 93 and 94. But, uh, yeah, Pac, uh, put his low rider. He just bought a low rider, put it on a flatbed, drove it out to the, to freak Nick. Freak Nick was a annual, music convention that everybody was going to at the time. Everybody was there, all the tops in the game was there. And we made it to be going there and to be performing and headlining. And so Pac wanted to show out. Got the low rider down there, is going through the crowd. Everybody's looking like, ooh, that's nice. Ooh, that's a badass car. It was a, a, a 6 on Impala, cocaine white interior, rag top, baby blue. And uh, uh, when it finally, you know, it got to this parking lot, long story short, it got to this parking lot, everybody was looking at, whose car is that, whose car is that? And then Pac hopped up on the people saw him, and everybody went crazy. It was dope, it was dope. And then we rode around Atlanta like we was, you know, the president, the vice president, you know, Pac was on top of the seats, waving to the people in the hotels all up and down, all <laughs> both sides of the street. It was, it was, it was a dope feeling. And probably the whole whole city was probably showing you guys love too, cause yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Um, so I got and you know they didn't even have low riders out there, so we was on some special shit. We was hitting switches, sixteen switches, West Coast way. Yeah. On the south side, living it up like the west. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. five days ago. Thug Life Volume 1 turned 25 years old. How does it feel knowing a project that you helped create is still irrelevant 25 years later? I, 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 I feel blessed that it's relevant. I feel blessed I ain't waste my damn time. We ain't waste our damn time. Um, you know, we ain't get to reap all the benefits. A lot of business is fucked up. But uh, um, we made an impact, you know. And uh, thank God for Pac. And uh, the fellas, um, it's, um, you know, it's a uh, bittersweet as well, you know, bittersweet. Pac came here, Psy came here, you know, Nate Dog came here, Johnny J ain't here, you know. Um, that's, and that's just a portion of the brothers I lost these last 25, you know. Um, yeah, but um, we did that. <laughs> we did that, you know. And they're gonna be remembered forever. Mm-hmm. My man, my man Nate Dog, rest in peace, Nate Dizzle. You know, architects. I do want to say I know you heard this many times, but I do want to say my condolences to your brother and for the rest of the family you lost, man. Um, I know it's just words, yeah. but I do want to express my condolences to you. Appreciate that, man. Same to you, man. You know? Same to you. I know my situation is because I'm in the public eye, I had to develop a thick skin because ain't no way people was not going to ask me or want to know about the greatest rapper of all time, the king of rap, Macarelli Don. And being I, I am who I am, my responsibility is to carry on his legacy Represent uh, when need be, spread the word, uh, stay positive and progressive, help the community, the things that we originated with. You know, when suckers got in the way, that's what shifted his course because, you know, um, ultimately.
ultimately Pac was not going to be uh, <laughs> done like that without any without, without it being addressed. So, you know, that's that. For sure, I gotta say, rest in peace to Machiavelli the Don. No motherfucking doubt. So, going on, going off on, the, going away from the Thug Life days for a minute. Um, so, some some might know you were an original member of the Outlaws rap group, uh, but shortly after you left, shortly after you left the group, um, if you don't mind me asking, what happened there? Of, w- of what group? Uh, the Outlaws. Oh yeah. Well, you know. A lot of people, uh, uh, they don't, you know, first of all, first of all, there was a lot of chaos and confusion going on at the time, right? And uh, different aspects of our movement. But when we started out, me, Pac, Psych Talk, was me and Psych was less when was left around after the, you know, the thug era, after Pac got out of jail, he was on some new shit. Like, yo, so... You know, because Thug Life was still a part of him. So we said, well, how are we going to do this? And, you know, so we decided to create the Thug Life, the, the Outlaw Immortals. Outlaw Immortals included me, Pac, the site, you know, from the Thug Life gang. You know what I mean? And um, from then on, it would be the Outlaws. So Outlaw Immortals, we were looking at it like we were pushing the Outlaws out, if you notice, on that record, uh, um, you know, all of us, that record has all of us on it, ex- except for Noble, when we ride, except for Noble, I don't even think he was around it yet then. So, um, that was that was why, you know, everybody didn't see me on all the Outlaw shit, I'm Outlaw Immortal, you know. I'm, I'm on a few. I'm like, yeah, I'm on if you play your cards right. I'm on when we ride. I'm on um, there's some shit that still ain't came out yet. You know, one day y'all will get to hear. It's still in the archives. But, um, yeah, so, you know, because I didn't, you know, I started this shit out. Literally started this shit out before pop. So, I, you know, it was time for the young niggas to get their grizzle on and see what they could do. You know and I mean, and that was the purpose. And you were also featured on a soundtrack for the motion picture film called Intoxicating. Um, how did you get on that record? Yeah, it was interesting. I think um, my man, brother Marquise from the Two Live Crew, he was out here. We was um, working together for a bit on the, the Thug Law record, and uh, he had uh, I got plugged with that film, and I did it. And it's interesting because now, um, you know, that's a lot of what I do, you know, um, music supervision, music placement in TV and films and shit like that. From that experience, you know, I just took it on. And um, because it was cool, you know, we we did a record. It it actually made it in the movie. The movie ain't blow up and do nothing too big, but, you know, we was doing it. So, also in 2008, you you were a consulting producer for the BET series American Gangster, Matulu Shakur, and the Republican of New Africa. How did that come to be? And the Republic of New Africa. Yeah, because, um, you, you know, we had, and, you know, I, uh, BET was doing a series about American Gangster, and, um, you know, often... My father is called a gangster, but he's actually not. You know, he's a revolutionary. So, um, um, you know, we approached him with, uh, you know, with doing an episode about my father, but talk about the real gangster, because the real gangster there uh, <laughs> was J. Edgar Hoover, you know. And then from that, they took that and went on and did one about J. Edgar Hoover and what, but, you know, whatever, but I wanted, they, since they was going to try to do it, I wanted, we wanted to try to, you know, shape the narrative properly, you know, <laughs> that, um, you know, you can't just, not too Shakur, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta explain it properly, so, you know, people can decide whatever, however they feel, but most people feel like Dr. Shakur is a, is a, is an American hero, you know, so, 
I do have to say, Matulu Shakur as well needs to get out, man. Like, I I don't believe he should have even went to jail. Um, so I really do hope that your father gets out soon, man. He does not deserve to be in there. Yeah, you know, we we strong people. He, he a gorilla, he an alligator, muddy water, you know, surviving. But, um, you know, they holding him past his time. Anybody want to send him a kite, shoot him a kite? He's in Victorville, Victorville, California, Victorville, USP. 83205-012 is his number. Yeah, shoot him a kite, you know, shoot him, send him some love. Let, write to prison, whatever you all want to do, you know, we're trying to get him out. Um, we we trying to shake some trees to get him out because they've already held him two, three years past. He was supposed to be out in 2016. And um, so, you know, that's a, the struggle continues, you know. If you don't mind me asking, Stru- um, how, how is he doing, actually? I mean, he's good. God is good. You know, being that he is who he is, he got a lot of support in there. So he's straight. He's just trying to keep his health up because it's not a very healthy environment. And, uh, you know, uh, they really didn't, they really don't want him to walk out of there. But, you know, they can't stop the bum rush. Uh, they can't stop the bum rush. We should cause. We should cause. Yeah. Most, honestly, most of that, I really do hope everybody that's listening, you heard Mo Prem. He gave the address, a right to Matulu, right to jail. Let's shake some trees. Hopefully it makes an impact and help gets Matulu out. So I have to ask, what's next on the agenda for you? Like any new music, movies? My everything, baby, everything. I'm, I'm an artist, you know, so I'm going to go with the creativity. You know, if it's positive and progressive, it makes sense. If it's educating and, and relating to, you know, Everybody, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm on some, uh, uh, um, you know, positive and progressive. That's my, that's my motto. You know, trying to keep the homies up, the one that's left, keep them, keep them straight. You know, we have made it out of the reckless ever. You know, a lot of, you know, a few of them made it out the reckless ever. Try to keep them, you know, on the thing. You know, much love and respect to all the thugs and the outlaw family around the world around the world because we're worldwide ten, you know so Mo Prem, this is the time of uh, when I right at the end when I give the uh, person that comes on my show just a chance to give like thanks or shout outs whoever they want to give shout outs to and also their social media handles is that way the listeners if they haven't followed you already they could shoot you a follow on, on social media Yo, I don't really be tripping on the social media, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, a lot of people be faking it to make it, but if you really want to find me, you'll find me. Mo Prim Shakur, Thug Life Outlaw, Immortal, shout out, much love and respect to the Don, the legend, the king of rap, Machiavelli, the Don. Preach it. The legend, Big Sight, Mussolini, Yaki Gaddafi, Yak Lo, Fatal, Johnny J, Nate Dog. You know what I'm saying? My soldiers and arms, Big D, the Impossible, uh, G Money, man. Uh, and, and anybody, I forgot apologies, but I done lost too many. But um, much love to the out there, to Canada, to uh, all y'all there uh, gigging at Drake. Shout out to Drake, he doing his thing. Can't I can't fuck with him. Um, yeah, man, much love to Canada. Y- y'all got to get some heat out there, though. Y'all, I'm a, I'm a tropical brother. I like sunshine, palm trees. Y'all got the weed. Y'all just need a little more heat out there. I'll be out there. Oh, I agree with that. We don't have our weather's all wonky half the time. We get hot weather one day, next day it's snowing. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I can only ski and snowboard, but so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, honestly, I've always wanted to visit California as well. You know, the warm weather, the ocean. You can't go wrong with the palm trees, man. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Well, y'all, y'all come visit. You know, we cool with Canada. Y'all come visit any time. Fuck Trump. You fuck with Como Prim. I got you. I got I got the plug. I got the plug on the ground with the Mexicans. We get you in any time. Don't trip. Well, I'm down with that. You know, just stuff me in the trunk. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. All right. Well, Prim, you have a wonderful night, man. I want to say thank you so much for coming on the air. And I do want to say quickly, before we get off, I will, on behalf of myself... And all of the fans, man, thank you so much for what you did in your music, the lyrics you produced. Uh, You helped myself and a lot of people 
through a lot of difficult times, man. So I got to say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that, man. I'm about love, all love. And one last thing. To all the haters out there, I know who you is. We know who you is. We see you. But it's small things to a giant. Small things to a giant, you dig? We, we the kings of rap. Me and my niggas, we the kings of rap. So, you know, do what you may. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we been building a new empire. So, I bid you at you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Canada. Much love to y'all. Hit me up. You in town. Smoke something. I'm down with that. I can't say no. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Mo Premium. You have yourself a wonderful night, man. You as well. I'm going to go blaze this blood. Y'all be easy. Hell yeah, man. Puff, puff, pass. <laughs> All right, one. One love, bro.